Let's take a look at addition and subtraction equations with mixed numbers. Fill in the missing number, simplify your answer, and write it as a proper fraction or as a whole or mixed number. So we have 1 half plus 3 fourths. Now keep in mind, anytime you're adding or subtracting, subtracting with fractions, you need to have a common denominator. Common means the same, denominator means the number on the bottom of your fraction. So I want to rewrite these two over the same bottom number or common denominator. Now you might notice that 2 goes into 4, right? Another way to think about this is if you think about your multiples of 2, there are things like 2, 4, 6, 8. If you think of your multiples of 4, 4, 8, 12, and so on, notice 4 is a multiple of both numbers. So that means I can use 4 as my common denominator. Now the second fraction was already 3 over 4, so I don't need to change that one at all. The first fraction was originally 1 half, so this one I have to change around a little bit. To get from 2 to 4, I would have to multiply by 2, right? 2 times 2 would give me 4. So the rule is whatever you did in the bottom, you have to do the same thing on the top. So if I multiplied by 2 on the bottom, I'm also going to say times 2 on the top, and 2 times 1 gives me 2. All right, and now we're ready to add. Now, when you're adding these numbers, the denominator does not change. Remember, 2 fourths means 2 out of a total of 4, and 3 fourths means 3 out of a total of 4. So our answer is still going to be out of 4, and we just add the numerator, the numbers that represent the parts, right? 2 parts plus 3 parts equals 5 parts. So I wind up with 5 over 4. Now, this is an improper fraction, and that just means the top number is bigger than the bottom number, right? The numerator is bigger than the denominator. So it's not considered simplified. That's why they're telling us to write it as either a proper fraction or a whole number or a mixed number. So I'm going to divide this to turn it into a mixed number. Okay, so when you're turning this into a mixed number, it's basically thinking of it as division with a remainder. Right? I'm saying how many times does 4 go into 5? 4 goes into 5 one time with 1 left over out of 4. So if that was a little too fast, you can do it this way. Do your division with the remainder. Say 5 divided by 4. Okay, well, it doesn't divide evenly, but 4 does go into 5 one time. Right, 4 times 1 is 4. So basically what we're saying is, well, 5 minus 4 leaves us with 1, so we would get 1 remainder 1. So instead of writing it as 1 remainder 1, we're saying, well, that's 1 and 1 left over out of our denominator or total of 4. So we get 1 and 1 fourth. One and a half plus 3 fourths. Okay, when you have a mixed number, it's usually easier to start by turning that mixed number into an improper fraction. So I'm going to say 1 times 2, right, we're multiplying the whole number by the denominator. 1 times 2 is 2, so I can think of that 1 as being 2 over 2. And then I still have to add the 1 that was over here. So 2 out of 2 plus 1 out of 2 gives me 3 out of 2. And then I want to add that to 3 out of 4. Now notice these still do not have a common denominator, so I want to rewrite them with a common denominator. All right, so our common denominator could be 4, right, because 2 and 4 both go into 4. So the second fraction doesn't need to change at all. It was already 3 over 4. Here, we would say, well, to get from 2 to 4, I would have multiplied by 2 on the bottom. So I need to do the exact same thing and multiply by 2 on the top. Well, 2 times 3 would give me 6. So we get 6 over 4 plus 3 over 4. And remember, the denominator or bottom number doesn't change. It's still going to be out of 4, and you just add the top numbers. So 3 plus 6, or 6 plus 3, gives us 9. Now again, our answer is an improper fraction, right? Meaning the top number is bigger than the bottom. So I want to turn this into a mixed number.
Now you can use long division if you need to. I think that makes it a little easier to see. We're basically saying nine divided by four. Well, how many times does four go into nine? Four goes into nine two times, right? Four times two is eight. So if I subtract that, I have one left over. So you can think of this as two remainder one, or you can think of it as two and one left over out of that four, or two and one fourth. Some number minus one half is equal to one fourth. Okay, well to find the missing number, if I wanna know what number it was before I subtracted one half, I can kind of think in reverse here. Well, before I subtracted one half, it would have been one half bigger. So I can figure this out by saying, well, one fourth, what is one half bigger than one fourth? Or one half plus one fourth, right? That's working backwards to figure out what the number would have been before I subtracted. All right, well, I wanna start by finding a common denominator. Okay, so the common denominator for four and two is four, right? We saw that in the last problem as well, right? Two and four both go into four. My first fraction can stay the same. Here, if I multiplied the bottom number by two, right? Two times two gives me four. I have to do the same thing on the top and say one times two, which gives me two. All right, so one fourth plus two fourths equals three fourths, right? We're adding the top numbers, the denominator always stays the same. Now this should make sense, right? If we fill in three quarters here, three fourths, let's check our work here for a second. So does this work out? Well, three fourths minus, well over here, remember we said one half was the same as two fourths, right? We changed that. So if I say three fourths minus two fourths, does that give me one fourth? Mm-hmm. Three minus two gives us one. Our denominator doesn't change. So you can see that works out. 